Hi everyone. If you've been following along with the hacking on Recruto slides, this is the portion of the talk where we actually make some changes to the compiler. I picked out a few easy to fix bugs that cover different areas of the compiler for us to walk through to put some of the knowledge I've shared in the slides into practice. So let's take a look at our first bug. So this bug says that when you call min with plus a plus a and you call dot say on the product of that, it prints inf rather than pursuing an error. Well, if you remember, a prefix plus in Perl 6 means to convert something to a number. And since a isn't really a number or anything that looks like a number, that conversion should fail. And that's the actual premise of the bug report. So let's see if we can fix this bug. All right, so if you remember from the slides, the standard library, the built-ins for Perl 6 are stored in the source core directory. So let's look for a definition for the min sub in source core. All right, so we've got source core any. And here's our definition for min. And if you can see here, the definition is actually just calling the min method on the args array. So let's see if we can find method min. All right, so here's the min method. And we could try to make our modifications here and see if they work. But remember that Recuto's got still has a little bit of a longer compile time on the order of 40 seconds to a minute. So what I like to do is I like to lift out pieces of code into standalone Perl 6 files. We'll call this one mini. And that way we can benefit from having a shorter compile cycle while we're prototyping. And then we can merge our changes into the actual compiler itself. So let's just call mini with plus a plus a and see if it produces the intended result. Sure enough, it does. So let's actually look at what, how mini works. Well, we're mapping over the argument list and we're updating the current minimum here. If the topic is defined and if it's min if it's less than the current minimum. Otherwise, if we've never said it, it's going to return inf, which I think is what we're running into. Now, this if defined is kind of interesting. What if uh, our topic is just never defined? So let's inspect that. Sure enough, the topic is never defined. So if it's not defined, then what is it? Oh, they're failures. And that makes sense because in Perl 6, your numerification is going to produce a failure rather than throwing an exception all outright. That way you can check for it. And since def checking for definedness is a way of checking the failure, they are kind of getting swallowed up by min and silently failing. So there's a few ways we could fix this. One is we could explicitly check for failures in the argument list. Another is we could get rid of this definedness check and just kind of assume that the user is not going to pass undefined data in the argument list. However, there's a third option. Maybe we just want to ignore all undefined, whether failure or not, in the argument list. Maybe that's acceptable behavior. This is where I would actually go onto IRC onto pound Perl 6 on Freenode and have a discussion with some of the other Perl 6 developers to see what the best course of action is. Let's look at the next bug. Regex source doesn't include token, regex, or rule. So if we look at some of the demo code posted down here, if you use the rx construct to create a regex, regular, regex literal, you see the rx in the resulting output when you call the .perl method. However, if you use a rule, a token, or a regex, you don't see that. So let's see if we can find out where that's happening in the compiler. So let's open up the source code for the regex class, which lives in source core regex.pm. And let's look at the definition for the Perl method. Well, the Perl method checks if the source attribute is null. If it is, it just gives us the empty string. Otherwise, it gives us the source. OK, so let's figure out how, where and how the source is set. Right. Oh, here in actions, there's a piece of code that binds source of a regular expression object. That seems like it's our culprit. All 
All right, so let's see how this is getting called. We've got regex code ref, and that's called from a few helper or a few action methods, as well as from regex def. Now let's have a look at regex def in the grammar. All right, so it's called from the rule and token grammar rules. And if you can see here, the sim actually consumes the rule keyword, and then regex def is consumed. So regex def is what's parsing the actual block, and that's why we're not seeing it. So what we could do is we could take advantage of the method type dynamic variable. Dynamic variables are dynamically scoped instead of lexically scoped. So callees further down the call chain can see the dynamic variables that callers have set. And this is a, you'll see this a lot when you're passing information from the grammar to the action method. So what we can do is we can check for method type and if it's present, we can set that as part of the source. Okay, so if method type is defined, then we want method type plus a space. Otherwise, we want nothing. And then we'll throw that on to the match. Then let's build. All right, so we'll use RL wrap to run Perl 6M. That way we can get some read line completion. And let's define a regular expression just called RE and just match a dummy. And sure enough, we've got that regex prefix on there now. Let's look at our third and final bug. More than ugly error message, take without gather. All right, so if you just call take without gather, you get take without gather. There's no stat trace, no line number, no anything. So let's see, let's open up a test file and reproduce that. Sure enough, take without gather. So what I like to do is I like to actually just act through the source or AG or git grep, whatever you feel like, and just look for the error message. All right, so there's take without parameters, but not take without gather. What about just without? Oh my. Let's just look for Perl 6 code. Oh, okay. So here's this illegal without enclosing in source core exception. X control flow, that looks pretty promising. So what creates an X control flow? Ah, so here's our culprit, line 284 of exception. We've got this illegal take in closing gather. So what's happening is we're creating this X control flow exception and then we're throwing it right away. So what's happening, it seems, is that there's no backtrace associated with this. So what's calling this? We've got print control. Who's calling print control? So handle control is calling print control. Who's calling handle control? No one in this file anyway. Let's see who's calling in the source. Look at Red looks pretty promising. All right, so control is a block for control, uh, handling control exceptions like take. And so what's happening here is we're getting the virtual machine level exception and then we are passing it to handle control, which is extracted here and it's passed to print control. And we've got this exception Ah, so what's happening, it seems, is that we're never actually duplicate copying the backtrace from the original exception into the control flow object. So let's see if we can do that. Actually. I'll use the NQP bind adder method, uh, my bind adder special method, which just compiles down to low level attribute binding in the VM level. And I'll use decant, which is kind of this special thing that I'm not going to get into. We're going to be binding to the backtrace attribute. 
and we're going to create a new backtrace object wrapping the original VM exception, and that should set our backtrace. All right, so the compile finished. Let's see if that had the intended effect. Sure enough, it did. Now, what I would do is I would probably lift this out and try to, you know, make it happen for each of these control exceptions, but you get the idea.